Hi everyone. We the students of Ram Narayan Riya Autonomous College, the Department of History, present you a ritualistic journey towards the Ganesh Utsav festival. Ganpati Bappa Moriya, Mangala Murti Moriya. So, whenever we heard this slogan, those who know regarding the Ganesh Utsav festival, automatically start imagining the vibe of the festival of lord ganesha but have you ever wondered that how when and who and most importantly why did this festival came into being and is celebrated with full devotion and joy and differs from one day to one and a half day to five days to seven days and lastly 11 days that is till the ananta chaturdashi so first let us begin with the journey from the slogan so the most followed slogan ganpati bappa moriya there is a theory behind the slogan as well according to a story or a fable there was a devotee of lord ganesha in the 14th century in a village of shaligram karnataka who later settled at chinswar in pune and he evoked lord shiva with his efforts to attend siddhi that is the blessings from ganpati as a result of lord himself asked him in his dreams about his wish to be fulfilled by lord ganesha in response morya refused to take any material thing or wealth and he demanded only one thing which was his name should be forever remained connected to lord ganesha which was followed by lord ganesha himself showing us the inseparable bond with his devotee and hence the slogan ganpati bappa followed by morya came into existence Now let us move towards various theories that are put forward regarding how the festival came into existence so there are various puranic information various information from the stories as well as we get various plenty information from our ancestors as well so one of the most popular known story gives us account of ganesha's elephant head and it is most popular story known to every one of us that is how lord shiva fixed ganesha's head that is elephant's head on the child's body and how ganesha was formed the another theory is that shri vyas who was the writer of mahabharata the original writer is considered as shri ganesha so while writing the water in his body was lowered and thus the temperature in his body got high for this as a solution we have supplied a paste of mud and soil and sprinkled some water so the temperature on the next day was lowered and the day all this happened was the day of chaturdashi that was the fourth day of bhadrapad and then the next day was panchmi of bhadrapad Vyas removed the mud and submerged Ganesha's body in the water. And thus it is also known as Parthi Ganesh Puja. The another theory according to the Ganesh Purana says that the Ganpati was born in the Magh month and the Ganesh Utsav that we celebrate is in the Bhadrapad month. So in the month of Bhadrapad he went to meet his grandparents. thus parvati accompanied him to meet her parents and hence the festival of ganesh chaturthi came into existence according to various theories that we are known now the process of idol making is very delicate as we all know it is a very lengthy process and it is takes too long and it is not so very easy process The process begins every year on the auspicious occasion decided by the priest or else from the sera the idol maker known as the murtikar are making this idols from traditions from their fathers or great grandparents 
this idols are made from shadu soil so there are many techniques involved in making such as idol making made with the handmade idols the machine idols the large idols such as lalbag saraja and many idols of the mandaps are made in the mandap itself as they are very very large and they are made with shadu soil and thus it is impossible to shift from factory to mandap so in maharashtra there are many murti cars or idol makers who make famous idols of ganpati or mandaps some of them are kamli family kattu family muduskar family etc this families made idols are already fixed to specific mandaps today due to the environmental concerns the trend of eco friendly ganpati is emerging and it is getting very popular every year as a result they are made of shadu mati only and the pop is a As we all know, every ritual of Ganesh Utsav has its own significance. There are many rituals followed, such as the Pran Pratishtha, Nada Shoda Pchar, the Gauri Ganpati Agman, the Uttar Puja, and many others. The Pran Pratishtha Pana is done on the first day of Ganpati, and it is an important festival because it is believed that it brings the Murti into life. And in this ritual, there are various mantras that are chanted by the priest, and thus the murti is believed to brought into life. The second day is equally important as the naivedya is prepared, and the special rushi panchami bhaji is made during this. The rushi panchami is considered in the honor of the seven rushis that are Kashyapa, the Vishwamitra, the Jamad Agni, the Antri, the Gautama, the Bharadwaj, and the Vashishta. Also, Saint Vashishta's wife Arunita is also worshipped. This bhaji is made by mixing various bhajis that are grown in the uh, backyard of the house, such as the pumpkin, the yama, and various others, which are mixed with green chutney. There is also the shodha upchar vidhi performed, which means upchar, which means service, and shodhas, which means sixteen steps to perform the puja. The Gauri Agman is an important ritual where the woman brings the Gauri in the house. This ritual is performed in a unique way. The puja is performed outside the house and by carrying water in the mouth and holding the tambya or the kalash in the hand, the Gauri is brought inside the house and is situated beside the Ganpati. There is also difference in the ritual that is performed. That is, in some places there are two gauris brought, whereas in some places there is one gauri brought. Some believe gauri is the form of goddess Parvati, who was the mother of Lord Ganesha, whereas some believe that they are goddess Saraswati and goddess Lakshmi, who were the daughters of Ma Durga, and thus two gauris are brought. There are in some places no gauri brought. The reason is that gauri is brought only in the house where the kul devat of the house is situated. Also, some houses there is naivedya given, like some offer mutton to gauri. The reason behind this is that the devats in each house are different. There are two types of devat. That is gourd devat and tikhat devat. For tikhat devat, the sacrifice is important, and thus the mutton is given to them. There is also Satyanarayan puja done after the Gauri Agman. This ritual also differs. Some places do the Satyanarayan puja. The reason behind it is to establish positivity in the house. Uh, there are some rituals that are going on until the Visarjan, and each ritual has its own significance. So, when here we are talking about the rituals, how can we forget about the Ganpati Artis? All ten days of Ganpati are known for the artis that are performed. People gather in huge numbers for the artis and for the prasads. So the COVID situation has led the enjoyment of the artis to reduce, as people don't gather in huge numbers. But still, this is an important ritual for all the Maharashtrians there. So, when we are talking about the Ganesh Utsav festival, how can we forget the state of Maharashtra, which is the hotspot for this festival? In every gully of Mumbai and in every chowk of Pune, 
there is the Ganesh idol installed and is very well known for. In Maharashtra, the festival is celebrated at home as well as in local communities. At home, the family installs the small clay statues for worship. And these statues are worshipped in the morning and the evening by offering the flower strands for young grass, also known as durva. And sweets are also offered, such as karanji and mudak. And arti is also sung in the honour of Lord Ganesha. And other gods and saints are also worshipped. The Marathi Arti Sukakarta Dukharta, which was composed in the honor of the great saint Samartha Ramdas, is also sung. The visurgeons are done according to the livelihood traditions. Some visurgeons are done in one and a half days, there is some in five days, some in seven days, and even some in eleven days. It is according to the Tithi and the tradition. So, the most important and the most known celebration of Mumbai and Maharashtra is the public celebration, where the youth organizes such event. The funds are arranged for the celebration by collecting it from the members of the group known as Mandras. There is also Vargadi collected by the members of the group as well as the society. There are many famous Mandras in Maharashtra. The first and the most important mandra is Lalbaksa Raja Sarvajani Ganesh Utsav Mandra. It is the idol visited in Mumbai and it's located in Lalbagh market of the central Mumbai. Almost 20 hours of time is taken to get a glimpse of Ganesha idol of the mandra. Millions of people believe that the idol fulfills their wishes and also 1.5 billion people try to take a glimpse of a day. The idol's hands stalk a crown and is decorated with gold. It also decorated with a golden necklace, thread and a ring. Some of the other famous mandras are Ganesh Galitsa Mumbai Tsa Raja, Khetwadi Tsa Raja Ganaraj, JSP Seva King Circle Mandar, Andheri Tsa Raja, Girgaon Tsa Raja etc. There are many Ganesh temples in Maharashtra which hold a significant place in the local history. There is a temple in Pune which is described as the birthplace of Lord Ganesha and the Ganesh festival is celebrated there that is the Manitse Ganpati temple. There are five Manitse Ganpati and there are also some places which are considered to be the protector of Pune to become the identity of the city. Though the festival is celebrated with a great enthusiasm in Maharashtra, other states like Tamil Nadu, Goa, Gujarat, Karnataka etc. are not behind. Thus, this festival is celebrated across this continent. Not only in India, but Ganesh Utsav is also celebrated with love and happiness in other countries like Canada, Cambodia, USA, etc. The Visarjan is considered as the farewell given to Lord Ganesha to mark the conclusion of the festival. Visarjan day differs in every family to family and tradition to tradition. It is believed that Lord Ganesha returns to Mount Kailash to join his parents Lord Shiva and Parvati on the last day of the festival. The devotees Pray Lord Ganesha to always shower his blessings on them and to return next year. While returning, he takes with him all the problems and unhappiness. On the day of Visarjan, Arti is being performed by chanting the Ganesh Mantra and then the bhog is distributed amongst the present. The Visarjan ritual begins with the Uttarang Puja which includes offering Five items, namely deep pushpa dhoop, gandha, and naivedya, that is food, to Ganpati. According to Kokni tradition, a slogan, Jai Deva Maharaja, He Maharaja, is chanted, and the devotees ask Ganesha a wish that he will fulfill next year while returning. The Ganesh idol is taken to the beach or designated area and the aarti is performed and the statue is immersed in water. 
Ganesha, who is known as the Lord of New Beginnings, is worshipped as the remover of obstacles, that is Vignaharta. It is believed that when the idol of Ganesha is taken out for emergence, it takes away with it all the obstacles of the house, and these obstacles are destroyed along with the Visarjan. After Visarjan, Ganesha may leave our home, but his partially dissolved idols are found floating in the water. Through this, we are not only dishonoring the deity, but also polluting the environment. Many efforts are being taken in this direction to reduce the environmental impact of this festival. Attempts to make Ganesh Utsav at eco-friendly ranges from cleaning the rivers and beaches after visage. To installing the environmental friendly Ganesh ideas and emerging them in the bucket of water or an artificial lake. Even after the year in the wake of pandemic, no procession is permitted for visage. And according to the guidelines by the government, the immersion ceremony should only be done in the artificial ponds which will be created by the public and the private authorities.